Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Just calling everybody in from the highways and byways. Great. Okay. Morning. I'm going to ask uh, Julia Shetler to uh, make an announcement for us. Good morning, everybody. It's a great morning to be here. Uh, today, I just wanted to explain that we're going to have a workshop right after church uh, on the affirming process. And uh, a lot of you are going to say, oh, I don't understand that. What is all that language they use? I don't understand it. But it's okay, because we're going to learn together. And when you go home, you always have Google, and that can help you too. So not to worry. Today, we're going to learn, we're going to color, we're going to sing, and we're going to have some fellowship together. There's a free lunch, everybody's welcome, and I hope to see you all come out and learn with me. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. For those of you who are uh, visiting this morning, we have uh, bumped Advent up a Sunday. <laughs> we're, we call it doing it Advent our way. So today we're celebrating the second Sunday of Advent. And the reason why we're doing this is on Sunday, December 24th, in the morning, which is actually Christmas Eve, we're not having worship that morning, but we're having a Christmas Eve service. So that takes me to Christmas Eve. So Christmas Eve, we're having this interactional uh, Christmas Eve. In other words, you can come dressed in a costume, and you can be a sheep, you can be a shepherd, you can be Mary, you can be Joseph, you can be a star if you need to be. <laughs> so uh, I just invite you all to think about uh, some costuming, inviting your family to join with you. And of course, if you don't want to costume, just come, come as you are and enjoy our Christmas Eve pageant. So I'm going to ask you to stand for our gathering music, Your Love is Amazing.
In our sadness, you are the God of joy. In our heartache, you are the God of love. And so we enter into this time of worship with confidence and hope, knowing that you are always ready to meet us and bless us with love. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to ask our candlelighters to come forward, please. And let us say together, we light a candle for peace as the flame of hope begins to burn. Let the promise of the ages shine in our hearts as the great star shone so long ago in Bethlehem. Let us pray. Let your spirit burn in our hearts. Let your light shine in our world. And as we wait through the Advent season, for the baby Jesus' birth, let your star of peace lead us to the place where the Christ will be born today. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our Advent Canding Lighting Song. We're going to sing this beautiful Advent hymn called Star Child. Let us stand and sing together.
classes. Sorry. I'll be sharing with you from Isaiah chapter 40 this morning, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill laid low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of God blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the worst of our God, the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Here is your God. And a reading from Mark chapter 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God, we enter into searching for peace in the midst of this season. The world tells us that peace will be found through the perfect gift or the perfect family gathering. We know in our hearts that such perfection is beyond anyone's reach, and still we become fearful cannot meet such expectations. So, gracious God, we pray for the touch of your peace, your peace in the wonders of the world around us, and your hope in us. And as we are reminded of how we are loved by you, let this hope touch our lives, so we may share this peace with others and together celebrate the true joy of this season, your presence amongst us that does not require perfection. Amen. 
Let us sing, Prepare the Way of the Lord, and we'll sing it four times. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength, and our rock. Comfort, O oh comfort my people. Comfort, O oh comfort my people. My people. I was thinking as I read the first line of the 40th chapter of Isaiah how comforting the word my is comfort comfort my people my friend my son my daughter my love my church my neighborhood my family my Doug my Jim my Bob my Milo my Susan. So comforting for the person being spoken to. My people. My God. The Hebrew word used for my people here is Ami. Ami. In the early part of the book of the prophet Isaiah, God's word through the prophet was different. It was lo ami, lo ami, which translates to these are not my people. These are not my people. These are not the people I made a covenant with. They do not honor the intimate relationship that we have together. I am there for them. Yet they turn away and say, this is not my God. And they do things which dishonor me. And for that, they have been punished. In Isaiah 40, God's message to the people is reversed. We hear the words, speak tenderly to them. Speak tenderly to them. They have repented. They have suffered, they have cried out, they have prepared their souls for the return of God's presence. The time for them has come to come home. Now I will bind up their wounds, I will restore their souls, I will be merciful to them, and they will be forgiven. When a collective group turns away from God and forgets how God guides and empowers them, there are negative consequences, and we see it throughout the scriptures. They rely on their own devices, they become too proud, 
and they forget the justice of God. And such was the case with the Hebrew people. They were exiled from their home country. They were defeated in a war. They were conquered by the Assyrians. Their place of worship was destroyed, the temple, and they were separated from family members. And this lasted for many years. And in this 40th chapter of Isaiah, things change. God says, enough, enough. God sends to Isaiah words for the people, words that will heal them, that will affirm them, that will comfort them. The words we hear today came to a people who needed positive, positives in their life and they needed renewal. And they were also words for the Assyrian conquerors also, let my people go. It's time for them to return to their home. Oppression stops now. Now it was time for God's people to come home to be restored in hope. Make the way straight in the desert for them. Take away any hindrances that may affect their journey. When Easter and royalty in those days marched through desert countries, ways were prepared for them and hindrances were removed so they had a smooth path. There are many people of the world now who at this moment as a group have been forced to live in exile in poor conditions with hope overshadowed by grief and despair. And many have not brought this on by themselves. It has been forced upon them by those in power because of hate, because of prejudice, because of greed. They cry out to God. They cry out to Allah. They cry out to Yahweh, to God, to their God for deliverance. They want some comfort. They desire peace. They desire peace within themselves and within their tribal group. There are times when we feel we are not at home. We are displaced. We're not comfortable in our being. When we are in that place for too long, it is oppressive. We're unbalanced. We're not in a right relationship with God. It's like being exiled from your true home, your soul. Think of times when you felt like you were in exile in your life. Were you shunned by friends? Did you go through a divorce? Were you bullied? Did a parent tell you to, to leave the house and never come back? Did someone you trust betray you? So many have experienced exile, which is the loss of life as we have known it. And some of these things come to each of us this moment. At times like this, we need to prepare the way for God to come back into our very being, to make the path straight and any obstacles removed. So the Holy Spirit can work within us again. When our pathway seems too narrow and we struggle and we cry out for aid, we must make the way wider and more sufficient for the indwelling Spirit of God to, to be present. We talk to a God out there far away when in fact the omnipresent God, our God, is as close to us as our breath and near to us as hands and feet, a very, a, a very present help in time of trouble. In the Advent season, we prepare the way for Jesus to dwell in the hearts of all people that they may receive glad tidings and receive peace. At Christmas, 
We remember the incarnation when God became flesh and dwelt among us in Jesus, reconciling and making all things new. God did this because we were in an emergent situation on the earth when it came to right relations with one another. We have evolved much in our compassion and fairness with one another on the earth, but we are still on emergency mode in many areas of the world. The planet itself physically is unhealthy. How is it that people may be assured and receive comfort from God whose love is constant throughout time? People have come, people have gone throughout time. They have had exciting lives. They have had lives that were a lot of suffering. We humans bloom like flowers, briefly, in God's time, and then we pass on to the next place. We know we are mortal. God, however, is constant throughout time and space and has been a loving presence in the lives of all people who have lived as God is present in our lives right now. Consider for a moment the journeys of the ones who came before us. Consider their journeys. Imagine their fears, their worries, the doubts, the conversations which might have taken place. They are a part of us. They travel with us now in our context. Let us place our ancestors and ourselves with all of the hopes and fears that come with living with all those images and pictures in the media of those who are seeking to find this moment new hope, new comfort, new life, new communities around the world. Let us think of their traveling, let us think of our own travel. Was the way rocky or was it smooth? Did they experience welcome or rejection? Were their neighbors, employers, faith communities, strangers, were there those people who offered them comfort and hope? Or was their journey so difficult, was the path so hard that they wondered why they ever left that former place? Let's put ourselves with all of those whom we speak of or think of now. God says through the prophet Isaiah, prepare a highway in the wilderness for the people to come home. Make the way flat and straight, no more obstacles. And that's even a prophecy for our day and age. Make the, prepare a highway in the wilderness for the people to come home. Make the way flat and straight, no more obstacles. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people. All people who struggle, struggle, and that's probably all of us, can eventually find their way to a place of comfort and peace, a place that feels like home. And you who struggle this moment, you and I, remember that God is within us and within others, very close to us. God's glory is revealed in people working for justice, people who come through difficult, very difficult trials. God's glory is revealed in them. God's light shines into dark places through groups who work for right relations. God's love conquers all. It all begins with me, it all begins with you, 
It says in a letter of Peter, the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. God is patient with us, and so we must learn the discipline of patience with ourselves and with other people. This is a comforting thought in itself. God is patient with us. Thank goodness. John the Baptist was patient and persistent in declaring, prepare the way of the Lord, repent and be baptized. He looked funny. He didn't wear the best of clothing. But over and over he said it because he was God's messenger and he wanted people to have comfort through repentance and through baptism. He cried out to people because he loved them and he wanted the best for them. The Advent candle of peace burns this morning along with the candle of hope. Hope and peace offer possibilities to those who struggle this very moment. So, continue to be messengers of comfort to all people, beginning with myself, with yourself. Our relationship with God is very sacred. Whatever we have done to hurt others, we're forgiven for now. As part of our relationship with God, we are to go to people, unprejudiced, without judgment, and offer them an amazing grace. God was incarnated in Jesus to bring peace to the world. We are responsible in being incarnations of Jesus to our world as a Christian community here at Central United Church. They will know we are Christians by our love. They will know we are Christians by how we love. Comfort, comfort, my people. Let us pray. We present our prayers of thanks for family, faith, freedom, and love that never lets us go. We acknowledge the constant gifts we receive daily, food, water, shelter, income, health care, safety, opportunity, and amazing grace that never lets us go. During Advent, we take inventory, God, of our lives and prepare the way for growth, redemption, and renewal in ourselves, within our community, and on our planet Earth. Where we have fallen mightily, help us to learn from that and uplift us for a new beginning and a fulfilling present. Thank you for times when we were wounded severely, very vulnerable, requiring healing and understanding. Thanks for being there then. Thank you for the times when we hit rock bottom and you helped us get back up on our feet to walk firmly again. Be with each person in this beautiful church building today that they may hear a word or feel an action that transforms them. Walk with each person in our city that they may know that they are affirmed and respected. Pour out your encouraging spirit that counsels and guides. Comfort your people who have suffered long enough. Open all avenues for the spirit of reconciliation to prevail amongst people of our earth. Thank you, God, for your help when we grieve and are wounded so much. Thanks a lot for the many times we required healing. We know that your healing balm is close to those who need it most this very moment. Through faithful caregivers, doctors, nurses, therapists. We are confident that nothing separates us from your love. Your love came to us at Christmas in Emmanuel, Jesus. 
May we show our gratitude for Jesus in the living out of a courageous, compassionate life, just as he did. And we say now his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
you very much, choir. We have received so much, let us give back now in return. pray together. Through these gifts, may we be agents of hope in your world, lifting up people in love so they can experience an abundant future. Amen. And our concluding hymn this morning is, There is a Voice in the Wilderness.
share in the blessing together. Enter this Advent week with peace. Enter this Advent with patience. May our waiting be rich and the presence of our God full and near to you. Bear God's peace to this world like one candle overcoming the shadows.